Good afternoon, everybody. Good Happy Sabbath for all those who are newly coming here this afternoon. <coughs> Welcome to our Bible study. This afternoon, we're going to discuss a very, top, uh, a very important topic. It's the loud cry of the third angel. Before you start, let's have a word Here we go. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful, Lord, that you brought us together to open your word again. Now there's still peace and we can study in peace. But we know, Lord, that the nearby future will be different. We have to study in our homes and in caves and remote places, perhaps, because the enemy doesn't like it. But Father, in this moment, we ask your presence abiding with us. Brighten up our minds, O oh Lord, and give us the light of heaven in our hearts as we study. Lord, we do not pretend to know everything. In fact, Father, we come we have to come to thee as somebody who knows nothing. For then, Lord, we can only grow. And that's what we want, Lord. We want to grow in Christ Jesus, our Savior. <coughs> so bless each one of us, O Lord. And let you be our teacher this afternoon. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 About the loud cry. By the way, um, Who's looking forward to the letter A? May I see that? Only a few. Who is preparing themselves for the letter A? Only a few. Why only a few? You, you, you don't want to see Christ coming? Are we at this? It's in the name. We expect Jesus to come very soon. Isn't it? But the question is, why should we pray for the letter? Can anybody give me an answer? Why should we pray for the letter? Because I do not pretend to know everything, not at all. So I want some help from you. I have uh, three elders here in our midst. And uh, they will be my second dots, my helpers. How are we going to prepare for the letter A? That's not a question. Can somebody give me the answer? How, how are you prepared for the letter A? Someone will pray for the Holy Spirit. Sorry? Pray for the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Feeling? Feeling. Feeling of the Holy Spirit. Feeling of the Holy Spirit. Okay. What else? Can you explain more? My brother. I think the first question you asked, why should we ask for the latter rain? Why should we ask for the latter rain? Before we go into the details, I want to say that because, because God, if, if he was a human being, would say he's a gentleman. God is gentle. He doesn't force his blessings on anybody. He says, ask, and it shall be given. And he says, which one of you fathers, if a child asked them for bread, they give him a stone. Or if they asked for fish, they give him a snake. If you who are evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give his spirit to those that's in Luke, the rendition in Luke. And so Jesus teaches that for you to receive the Holy Spirit, you must ask for it. You must ask for it. Okay. Once again, I ask you, how shall we prepare for the letter of could it be that we could receive the letter rain today? Is that possible? What else? I think uh, 
I think it's um, the Lord cannot come when we are not ready, and it's also you know it's it's the Christ and the Church in a marriage, and you are not married, you will not take his bride when the bride is not prepared. So he's waiting for the Church to prepare themselves that Christ can take them to, to heaven. I think it's, that's how we have to prepare ourselves. Mm, okay. So when we want to prepare ourselves, we must fit for Christ, and that's the preparation we need to do first. We must what? Be, that's the preparation we need to do first. We must be fit for the bridegroom. Okay. Preparation first. Our sister. Preparation bit. Um, the Holy Spirit. They talk about filling with the Holy Spirit. Filling with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we are vessels that should be filled with the Holy Spirit, or our hearts should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, if I'm just adding on the preparation bit, so I believe in the preparation we should make room. And so, if it's the Holy Spirit to come, and, and let's say, let's say this was my heart, okay? And I had so much my in, in this room. How much would he feel? Maybe I'll give him that little porch. Just be there. And so how much of the Holy Spirit can come in, in, into my heart if I don't make that room? Okay. Mm -hmm. Hold on. And no. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to respect what you hear. How much of the Holy Spirit do we need to speak in your words, Brother Hans, to be fit for the marriage to the Lamb. How much do we need of the Holy Spirit? Can somebody say that? Can you speak a little louder? need to be completely filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be completely filled with the Holy Spirit and rid of ourselves and be filled with God and pray and pray like we've never prayed before because the times are coming where I mean, the times are going to get so hard we have to start praying now like the like, you writes we have to plead with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Did you hear what our uh, sister said? She said we need to be completely filled. Completely filled. Before, I don't say, based on the spirit policy, before we receive the letter A. No. Are you with me? Yeah. So you can pray for the letter A as much as you want, but it will just not happen. Because the receiving of the letter A is a result, a logical consequence of being completely filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, when are we going to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Complete. Oh, sister. Well, in order for you to receive the latter rain, you're supposed to receive the former rain. Did you hear what our sister said? Mm -hmm. You cannot get the end and you did not get the beginning. Our sister calls it the former rain, or it's the early rain, and the latter rain. That's a distinction between those two. And we need to follow both. We must experience both. But one does not go for the other. You cannot receive the latter rain if you have not experienced the early rain. And it is the early rain who will fill us completely <coughs> with the Holy Ghost. That is the time that we will be made ready to receive the letter rain. And the letter rain, where is the letter rain meant for? What do you think? Ripening. For ripening. For ripening? For ripening? Yes. Completion. Ripening? But okay, now we are right, and then? We finish the work. Sorry? Can you speak a little louder? Because I, we cannot hear. To give the letter rain. The latter rain is to finish the work. 
uh, it, it's actually a sealing process that you're going through. It's a completion of what you started. It's just closing out the work. So we start with a former or the early rain, and the latter rain is to complete it. Yes, yes. To so complete what? The work that is started. And how do we call the, that work? Harvesting. Are we going to whisper the message? Can I try to answer that question? Well, first I'll... I'll... <laughs> Nobody can hear me, right? So, cry out. Okay, I, I wanted, first let me start, uh, go backwards. We need, as we have said, the early rain to be completely filled with the early rain. But even when you are completely filled with the early rain, you may not be fit for the latter rain. Mm -hmm. Remember the ten virgins? They all had lamps filled with oil, mm -hmm. which bent out in the end. Mm -hmm. Which means, while you are filled with the, the early rain, you must be ready to carry the extra oil which is the latter rain. You must actually be asking for the latter rain. It's not enough to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you are not looking forward and agonizing and asking to get the latter rain. You, you reach that point, the spirit of prophecy says, it will be raining all around you, but you are not getting the rain. Uh, I think that's, that's what, but the way of the latter rain is to mature the fruit. And the fruit actually is the, the reproduction of the character of Jesus Christ in human beings on earth to vindicate the character of God. Okay. You should ask for it. I have a question. I'm not following what you said, that um, if you are completely filled with the Holy Spirit, you will not be ready to receive the latter rain. My question is how can you be completely filled and you still do not receive the latter rain? Sorry, okay. How can you be completely filled with the Holy Spirit yet do not receive the latter rain? I'll, I'll answer that one. I'll answer that question. If you look at the ten virgins, it doesn't say that somewhere where Harlots, they were all ten virgins. And all of them were carrying lamps. And all of them were eagerly waiting for the bridegroom. Yes. And all of them, their lamps were trimmed, burning bright. Until the moment after they had slumbered and slept, and the oil they had, which had filled the, which they had filled their lamps before, ran out, and the cry came. Those who had prepared, they had the extra oil. But they all started with oil in their lamps. They all had the correct doctrine. They all had the Holy Spirit. <coughs> but we must know that you you may not receive the latter rain if you are not working for him right now. Can you perhaps explain how, how it was caused that they had no uh, oil, extra oil, extra oil by them, with them? How? How, how did it come? Well, because you are not prepared, they were not preparing. You see, that, that's the trouble. <laughs> we think we should wait until the time when there will be a, a call that now we must all get on our knees and start praying for the latter rain. That time might not come. The time to prepare is now so that we are ready, if you will, I take it as the extra container of oil. Only those who are preparing for the latter rain now will receive him when he will be called out. It will be too late to start looking for him once he starts getting called out. Could it be, could it be that they are belonging to the, to, to the group who are coming to church on Sabbath, they worship on Sabbath, they sing, they do everything in the church, but they only have a, a knowledge, but not an experimental faith. No. They are religious. Then? And they had oil to start with. You see, they are virgins, and our teaching is that virgins are saints. They have the pure doctrine. They didn't, they are not only virgins, they 
carried lambs, which means they had the, the lamb, thy lamb, thy weight is a lamb and my weight. They had the correct weight. To the extra oil. They had oil in their lambs, but it, the oil ran out because they had not foreseen that they needed to prepare to have the extra oil. Starting with the pure church members, they are not sinners. We are not talking about sinners. We are talking about saints who fail to enter in the end. Elder. Yes. Um, well, we are talking about the virgins, and I would like us to make also a parallel for uh, um, us today. So we are God's church today. And we're talking about the uh, early reign and the latter reign. Where Sister White explains to us in Acts of Apostles. If you read it, it's very clearly explained in Acts of Apostles chapter 5. And I would like to read uh, just a small portion because I, I was reading about it. And she says here, But unless the members of God's church, because this will answer a little bit your question, but unless the members of God's church today have a living connection with the source of all spiritual growth. Yes. So it says, living connection with the source of all spiritual growth, they will not be ready for the time of eating. So, early rain, latter rain, unless we have that connection, unless they keep their lamps trimmed and burning, they will fail of receiving added grace in times of special need. So this is this is very important. When we, we come back, so you can see early and latter rain. So it is important to keep this connection. And you were saying, is it that we're, these virgins are coming to church, they're singing, they're doing all of this. We can be present physically in church. But if we don't have that special connection with Christ, if we don't keep these lamps, trimmed and burning, there's nothing that is going to happen. We'll miss the point. Sister, up. Vietnam cannot be completely filled and will not receive the lack of rain. To me, completely, to me, completely filled means that you have done all that was required by God, that the Holy Spirit fill you completely. Complete fill means complete. Nothing is out of balance with that. So that means you, you can receive you, you, how you say you pass the test to receive the Holy Spirit because once you have failed, that means you did the work that you had had to do from before. What I understand now from um, Brother Bolele is that that was a partial fulfillment, not a complete fulfillment uh, that the virgins had. They had a certain um, fulfillment of the whole, uh, filling of the Holy Spirit, but it was not enough to reach for the lack of uh, Sister Leda, you have something to say? Hmm? No? Okay. Anybody else want to react? Can, you ask, can I ask a question? Um, can you perhaps give a typological example of this? Of, in the Bible, perhaps someone filled but not receiving. Do you have an I'll example? Explain, I'll answer each one giving a, a, an example. Can I, can I ask? If you talk about the apostles, none, none of the apostles actually taught the gospel that once you have received the Spirit and been filled with the Spirit, you will proceed and be saved. They will teach you the gospel that you have to keep at it. A connection, that's why it's saying there, the lambs will be kept trimmed. And uh, unfortunately in the virgin's is case, they slumbered and slept and the, the lambs went off. And when they woke up, they found the lambs were off. They didn't have extra oil. These are people who started with the oil. Paul himself says, look, if you sin, you forfeit the, the benefits which you had enjoyed in the spirit. If you read Hebrews, it teaches the message of people who are truly not, not, not forcibly converted. People who have enjoyed the gift of the Holy Spirit and then if they fall away he says it's very difficult for them to do what? To come back and so we should we should not deceive ourselves that once I've received the Holy Spirit then I step in heaven otherwise that's the message of once saved forever saved it's not our message no. 
Okay. It has never been our message. <laughs> and that's why we are told, you must endure to the end. Christ himself says, he to his disciples, he who will endure to the end shall be saved. Keep your lamps trimmed and burning bright. Um, isn't it so that uh, a woman is a church? The women are the church. If I compare it with the, they were virgin, they were women. And isn't that women are compared in the Bible as a church? Yes. So that the, um, let's say that uh, the final church from Christ, actually, if we may be the Seventh Day Adventist, that some churches go astray, that they have lost their 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 lamp, their oil. Absolutely. The yes. That uh, that that some uh, Adventist churches go astray. They don't uh, stay in, let's say, in the old path. And that is why they have lost their oil. They don't have their oil anymore. Sommige kerken, de kerk, de vrouw is een kerk. Ja, ja, ik ja. En um, de wijze en drazen maken zijn de Adventisten. Je te Ja, 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 je translate. Zijn de, zijn, zijn de Adventisten. Veel Adventisten, veel Adventisten die dwalen af. Okay. Uh, regarding to the, uh, to the virgins, a virgin or a woman, they are women, women, and uh, a woman in the Bible is a church. Could it be that uh, these are uh, uh, pictures of uh, the, the Seventh-day Adventist churches, some of them, which uh, do not go back to the, go back to the, ch the truth. They have been once delivered. Could it be? Can I have an answer? Sorry? Our sister said, regarding the ten virgins, a virgin is a woman, and a woman is a church in the Bible. Could it be that, that uh, these, these women, virgins, are a picture, an illustration of nowadays set there to these churches, of whom we know that some do not come up to the truth anymore? Hans. I think when it comes to the woman being a church, in uh, Revelation we see two, um, two different kind of women. One woman gives birth to a child, an old woman rides the beast. And they're very distinct, and one is the true church of God, and the other one is not. So it's not like ten virgins, ten different churches, it cannot be. No, I don't mean ten different churches. I know ten different Adventist churches, it will not be. There's only a true church and an untrue church. I've discovered one thing. If you read the Bible properly, God doesn't go to the Catholics, to the to the to the Catholics and make an example from the Catholics. He makes an example with the people within the church. Because those are the people he follows. He's not going to go to Egypt. He's going to go to Israel. Because he's staying, sitting with Israel. His eyes are on his sparrow, on the sparrow. And the sparrow is what is the, is the church. He's not going to go and make an example from uh, they, 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 uh, how they, they carry on with catechism. No, he's making an example. What we are talking about, we're talking about the church. Because you can, Brother Mulele is right when he says, you can stay in the church, you can build, you can build in the church, you can, but if the lamp, the, what is it, the oil is not there, has worn off from you, you are gone. But there are those who are prepared, who have the spare, Oil, who are going to put the lamp burning? We have to understand what he's talking yeah. about. Because he is talking about the ten virgins, which, like the brother was saying, the ten virgins, the sister was saying, the ten virgins 
are what? Are the women. And the women are what? Are the church. When Christ is coming, he's coming for his bride. He's not coming for catechism. He's not coming for the Roman Catholic. He's coming for his church. He says, I is one foundation. This church is one foundation. And he's talking about the seventh day events. He's not talking about somebody outside. God knows. That is why, uh, uh, this is why Apostle Paulo says, when you go and give people food, sometimes we have to check what we are doing. Because there are people in my church who are hungry. The people that are giving food and everything outside and going to, they are not going to be in the seventh day Adventist. Be careful what you do, because the time is now. The time has, has come. I don't know whether I, I, I answered you, my sister. Listen carefully to Brother Mdele what he's saying. This example is in the Bible for a certain purpose, for the church to learn that there are people who are sitting in the church who are not prepared to have the extra oil to burn the lamp when he's coming. Some people are not prepared. Some people are pretending to be caring. The seven churches, go back to the seven churches and listen, go back to the seven churches and read about the seven churches. You will get the truth. One, one is the, the pastor uh, is standing there and talking about. Okay, thank you, sister. Uh, sister Dorothy, and then sister Selina, and now sister. Hi. I want to correct an impression. Because if you go to John, if you go to John 10, 15, he said, other sheep that I have, I have other sheep in other, in other churches, denominations, but they are not of this fold. At the appropriate time, when I call them, they will hear my voice and do what? Come out and join the proper fold. Sister um, Corinne made a point, but I'm not totally in agreement, my dear elder sister. Last, this week, I was being lectured by a Catholic, a devout Catholic woman. You know, I was shocked to the marrow when she told me that, that it grieves her. Let me, I'm putting her verbatim. That in grief's her work is happening in these Protestant or Pentecostal churches. That when you go there, you ask yourself, where is the holiness? She was in Isaiah 6. That when Isaiah saw the trail of God's uh, 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 garment, that what he said, he heard the angels saying, What? Holy, holy, holy. She said that she's a appalled the way we treat God these days. That you go to church, you see people chewing like goats. I'm putting our baba table. That people are drinking, people are not, they are, they are more mindful that they have come to tabernacle with a holy God. I was just wondering, a Roman Catholic, we see them as what? The beast in Revelation? And these are people lecturing me. I was really humbled and I'm ashamed of myself. She says that it, it's, it's grief her when she watched these programs. In some of you, you, you people's churches, that people do not show reverence, that we don't have respect for God. I said, my dear, my, 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 my dear friend, you are telling me the truth. And we are praying that God should have a change of attitude in my respect and in your respect. And if I didn't get the sister's question very well, she said, does it mean that some of these people are walking away or digressing from what the laid down format? And how do we address this issue? That's the question that you and I need to unravel. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say that let us not also forget that uh, when uh, Jesus is going to, when we go to heaven and we will 
encounter people that's gonna ask Jesus, what are these wounds on your hands? <coughs> and if, you are, if one has been a Christian on this earth or heard about Christ, it is not possible for this person to ask Christ, what are these wounds? Everyone who has heard the name Jesus Christ knows he has been crucified. So these are people that God has even that have never heard of Jesus. Yeah. So God has people everywhere. And uh, I wanted to continue from what Hans was saying. What he was trying to say was, I think that we should not forget that we ourselves are churches. Let's not only think of the church, the Adventist church as an institution, but also that our hearts are also, and we should be prepared. And when the uh, former rain came, the apostles, uh, we read in the spirit of prophecy, they, are not, they were not sitting idle. Mm. They were continuously worshiping and praising, asking the Father, and then the Holy Spirit came. So in the same way, that's the way we can prepare for the latter rain to come into us. We have to continuously be in His presence. We have to continuously praise Him and worship Him with our lifestyle, with, with everything. And then we can receive the latter rain. And the latter rain is going to come in power in the same way that it did at the former uh, rain. And that power is going to enable us to stand in power when temptations come. It will give, uh, it will voice the third angel's message that we will be able to stand when Jesus comes. Speak loud. I, I, can you hear me? Yes. I needed a, a bit of clarification. Um, unpack what you mean by trimmed. Sorry? I wanted us to talk about actual practical things. Yeah. I'm not, I don't have a lamp in my room. I don't have something that I'm going to trim for scissors. So what I wanted, I request, is to unpack what you mean by Keep our lamps trimmed okay. and burned. Yeah? Brother Molele, would you please give an answer? What do we mean in keeping our trams, uh, our lamps trimmed? And, and that's one. Uh, could I just finish up with, so that I speak once and for all? Um, earlier, I was just giving uh, an illustration of a room where I need the Holy Spirit to fill. And I thank God it is complete. 100% feeling of the Holy Spirit. But what I was driving at is that, oh, let me make it a question. Could it be that in my heart, which is this room, I have so much feeling up my heart, and I don't even have room for the Holy Spirit to come and sit in there? One, could it be that I even have things that the Holy Spirit just doesn't agree with at all? So it becomes a very personal question. Am I listening to the Holy Spirit? Did he say stop watching certain movies? Did he say stop listening to, to certain music? Did he say your 24 hour day should have so much time for prayer? And then I say, no, you know, I don't have this much time, that much time for prayer. I have God's prayer, I have a job, it's so stressful with my family. Could it be that my life are filled with so much that we don't even have time to have the Holy Spirit with us? Then we give him only five minutes before he's sleep alone. So it becomes a, a, a question for me, not a question for the church. Thank you. Brother Mulele. We were saying with the Elder Patrice, we have elevated your Bible study. Maybe we should get back to your Bible study. But we have already read that what it means is actually to have a living connection continually be in a poor cause it dying daily. You, 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 can, you, can, you cannot say because now I'm saved, I'll relax, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit, it will go all the way. It, you, it, there must be a continual living connection with the, with the God of heaven up to the end. The moment we forget that, then we, we cannot have our lamps burning bright trimmed and burning bright. That's what the spirit of prophet says. But I, I think maybe we, we run away from the virgins because that's a, a whole doctrine. But remember, it's the one that leads to the loud cry, behold, 
the bridegroom comes. It's the same doctrine, and you must understand it correctly. You must carry. Remember, they, they went with the extra oil, which means that you, they were already prepared from the beginning. Okay. Even though they didn't know that it would take longer, but they already prepared for the extra waiting. Brother Dalekin, and then you the last one. This. Yeah. Uh, I want to look at it this way. We need to go back to the basis or maybe look at the what was the condition of the people or the disciples or the apostles before the anywhere, before they received the Holy Spirit. So let's look at their life, the which they were living, and look at their life when they received the Holy Spirit. I believe we are like them before they receive the Holy Spirit. Because when you look at the disciples, they were among they were like those who denied Christ. They were liars and they were supremacy, they have supremacy in them who will be the leader, who will be the first. Then that is our life now. Yeah. But we should believe in our life after the world. They received the Holy Spirit. And what was the condition of maybe uh, receiving the uh, early realm or the Holy Spirit? Because they were what? Christ told them what? Tarry, you know, in Jerusalem. Pray. And they were singing and praying and confessing their sin. Those who were supremacy now, supremacy was gone. They, no one owes anything. They all brought everything in the world that they should share together. They, are what, they were in one accord, in oneness. And that is the spirit that we need now to receive the letter read. Because we need to be confessing our sin. We need to be praying than ever before. Tiring and singing and praising. Sharing our tears together. Not to own anything so oh, this is mine. Or to be supreme as that, oh, I'm the leader. Or I'm the supreme, or I'm better than others. We should see ourselves as sin and that Jesus. And that is the condition that we need to receive the element. Without this, nothing more. Because we might see ourselves, okay, we are not talking about the five foolish virgins. Because the five foolish virgins were like, okay, let's take this little for you because they have already made their mind say that, oh, in so some time, the bridegroom will come. So they, they, they don't care. So, and this is, this is ours today. This is us today because we are building the coming of Christ. And we are saying, oh, it does not matter. Let's enjoy a little. Or let's wait for the fulfillment of the prophecy. When we see that, oh, but the mark of peace has gone, then I will repent. Or I will do the. the then you are, then you are like the five foolish virgin. Because you don't know when the word, your soul will be called to say, okay, today your soul will be required. So we should give our life and be praying together. And, you know, look, not looking at what we should be re examining ourselves. Because Holy Spirit or later on will be individual, it will not be a collective. So we need it as one. So when we look at the church, we say, well, then we meet the, miss the mark. So this is the time that we need to do what? Pray than ever before to have the spirit of the world. The, whole, the apostles, when they have already received the Holy Spirit. Thank you very much, brother. Sorry that I interrupt you. Uh, OK, I, I wrote a few keywords here. Um, also commemorating the text which says, he that shall endure until the end will be saved. <coughs> so we are talking about a preparation which starts at the beginning when you meet Christ and it goes on and it endures until the end without breaks. Because the moment that you break, it could have been the last time and the definite time that you could be connected to Christ. So, the call is not to give up. If you fall, it's okay. If you stumble, it's okay. Everybody stumbles daily. But don't stay on the floor or the ground. Mm -hmm. Get up with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Stand up. Is it Stand up, stand up with Jesus. Is that the song? Yeah. All right. So, preparation is very important. I heard another uh, important keyword from Brother Dalekman. He said before they uh, received the early race, they were in one accord. They were with one mind. And obviously, it must have been the mind of Jesus. Isn't it? So, the mind of Jesus, therefore, is crucial for receiving 
the latter rain. But before the latter rain, something else is going to happen first. What is that? Very short, please, not a whole sermon. Very short, to the point. Move on, Mr. Fedorovic. I was trying to portray the point of Rana Darenten. If you can. If you can go on memory lane, when we had uh, PT here, we had uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Veronica from uh, Tanzania. We have uh, Taya from Nigeria. Yes. These were married sisters who had no children of them. And what did this church continually do for these sisters who were waiting on the Lord? We were in one accord praying for them. And we took our prayers very seriously and also fasting and prayer. How did God answer these three sisters? In one year, three of them had three baby boys. They, were, they had, three of them had baby boys. And uh, the other day we were debating of how whether we will fast and pray in this church. And I'm asking myself, if you go to the spirit of prophecy, she reiterated and urged you and I to make our prayer life a constant exercise, fasting and prayer. And uh, it has now become a time of something to debate for. Unless we go back to the drawing board, Amen. we will not uh, receive the latter rain. Amen. Because we can speak grammar from Jerusalem to Jericho. God is very, very, very specific. Amen. Okay, thank you. I would like to read something. <coughs> and uh, we can uh, ponder over these uh, texts. Uh, taken from the book, The Last Day Events, where it says, the heading is judged by the light we have received. Judged by the light we have received. We will not be judged, therefore, by the light we did not receive. Okay? Adventist received and still receiving great light. Question is, what are we going to do with it? Many who have not had privileges that we have had will go into heaven before those who have had great light, us, and who have not walked in it. Are you with me? Yes. All right. Many have lived up to the best light they have had and will be judged accordingly. So that tells me that we will be judged according to the light we have had, not according to uh, the, the, the amount of light, but what did we do with it? Yes. Did we lift up to the light we have received? That is something, what you will know at the end, but you can already know now, if you're honest to God and to yourself, right? All must wait for the appointed time until the warning shall have gone to all parts of the world until sufficient light and evidence have been given to every soul. So that means that even the one who is living deep in the jungle, never heard of Jesus, will receive light. Mama. Some will have less light than others. Mm -hmm. But each one will be just according to the light received. We have been given great light in regard to God's law. The law is the standard of character. To it, man is now required to conform. Who among us has never heard here of the Ten Commandments? May I see your hand? Who of you is not struggling and battling with himself, doing, making all efforts with Jesus, of course, to keep the commandments of God? So everybody is battling. Everybody is fighting or battling his own battle, isn't it? Okay, are we, I cannot look into your heart. Nobody can look in, the, in each other's heart, but God can. 
And if you're honest with God and to yourself, looking in the mirror, the mirror which you find at home, but especially in the mirror of righteousness, that will determine, and by this you will know, if you're honest, whether you keep up the light as far as you have received it or not. In that day, oh no, so to it man is now required to conform, now, she says. And by it, the law, he will be just in the last great day. And that day, men will be deal, uh, dealt with according to the light they have received. Now, now listen well. No excuse for willful blindness. It's there, it's all around you, but you just pretend not to see it. You don't want to see it. You set it aside. No, it's not for me. It's for the other. It's not for me. I do not have to conform to that. I know it better than God, you're actually saying. But remember, you will be just. Each one according to the light you have received. Yeah. And now she says, none, none will be condemned for not heeding light and knowledge that they never had. And they could not obtain. But many refused to obey the truth that is presented to them by Christ's ambassadors because they wish to conform to the world standard. And the truth that has reached their understanding, the light that is shown in the soul, will condemn them in the judgment. You will not be judged for the light you have not received. You will be judged for the light you have received. Not only you, I as well. Okay? So, let us make sure that the light we receive from God, we will take it seriously. Because God is busy with us, under the power of the early rain, it's still early rain, not yet letter rain. And how do I know that? Because the letter rain comes after the ceiling. The ceiling is not now. Right before the ceiling, something happening in the world by which you have to make a decision. And that caused all people, especially the in the house of God, to make the right decision for God. And all those who set it aside Thinking that, oh, God doesn't take it so hard, it's fine, you know, I'm sad that, you know, will not make it. So, now, from the beginning, up to the end, enduring until the end, and then you can be sure that you will be saved. Sister Dorian. Yes. It's so scary, I have a, a very scary message here. And this is, um, this is volume one. This man is to the church. Volume 1, page 143 says, Behold, I stand at the door, and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and will sup with him and with, and with me. Listen, the scary, side, the, the scary side. I saw that many have so much rubbish piled up at the door of their heart that they cannot get the door open. Some have difficulties between themselves and their brethren to remove. Others have evil tempers, selfish covetousness to remove before they can open the door. Others have ruled the world before the door of their heart, which bars the door. All this rubbish must be taken away, and they can open the door and welcome the Savior. I... I feel the, I feel trapped here. And each moment of my life, I ask myself, how can I get away? Or how can I roll away the rubbish at the door of my heart for my master to use me for his own glory? It's something I cannot do myself. And it's only him. The same thing with you. May we go home and ask Lord, <coughs> to give us the enablement because the devil is very busy and he wants to get everybody, if possible, yes, even the very elect on the train of petition. And he is fast doing that. And I pray that the Lord will help us to search our hearts and humble. It says, 
And it only takes God and the whole of heaven to do that. If you think you can do it on your own, you will not be able to triumph. Amen. Brother Bolini. Yes, I, I want to just... I wanted to appreciate what uh, Sister Dorothy has said. However, I want to add on to say that where, where it come, when it comes to preparing for the latter rain, there is a duty that as a body we cooperatively must do. Because the calling is for us to get, get together into whether it's in home groups or in the church itself at church to seriously, like Brother Darrington pointed out, they got together and started agonizing, they started supplicating before God. And they started, like Sister Dorothy has said, sometimes we have issues with our own brethren. They started confessing their, their faults one to another. And up until, as a church, we get to a point where we have a deliberate program where we start praying so that as a body, we start seeing our own errors amongst ourselves yeah. and start forgiving each other. We will not receive the latter. Mm -hmm. It's a requirement for receiving the latter. Yeah, and she's very clear. Okay. Uh, what do you think of these thoughts? The early rain, <coughs> is that power which is setting us apart for a special and holy group. We call it sanctification. Another word for sanctification is reformation. Question is, are we reforming daily? Are we setting us setting ourselves apart for that holy purpose purpose? Because we have the last word. Not God in this. You must want it. God wills it, wants it. To work it out in you, but you are the one who has to do it. Do we want it? That's the question. What do you think of that thought? That God has not the last word in, when it comes to salvation. Come again, please. Sorry? Come, come again. Come again? Yes. I said just now that God does not have the last word when it comes to being saved. And then I said, if we don't want it, it will not happen. For the fact that God does not force us. So we must open the door when Jesus knocks. And God will come in. And will have some with us. Isn't it? So we must be willing. We must not push God away when he comes in front of us. Yes, it's not always nice to hear for a sinner that he commits sin. It's not nice. It's not nice. I, I, I am reminded of it daily. And sometimes it hurts. But pondering over it, thinking about it, being informed by it, by reading books, the spirit of prophecy, the Bible, listening to your wife. You may think, well, what does your wife to do with it? I think it's very important because as a married couple, you are supposed to be one. If one side goes that way and the other side goes that way, then it's very hard to be in unity with each other, isn't it? And that's why it's good to have a wife on your side which tells you, Rich, in my case, you're going astray. Well, explain to me. And she will tell me. But for my side also, if I see my wife somebody go going astray, it doesn't happen often, <coughs> but then I will also have to tell it. But it's the same here in the church. If you see a brother or sister going astray, you have to tell it in a loving full way. But we must see the urgency of that. Also the one, the party, who is on the other side. And if we are not willing to be corrected, as it is, we say, 
then it's very difficult for the spirit to enter into you. Because the spirit convinces us of sin, but also of righteousness. And he is there to help us. He is there to empower us. The spirit is also power. Because it moves you, it, 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 yeah, it does not force you, but it moves you in the right direction, unless you do not want it. So, first, the early reign is that saving power, which we call sanctification. After the early reign, due to the circumstances which will come to pass here in the earth, very soon, I believe, we will have to make a decision for the good, beginning in the house of God, and then the blotting out of sin will take place. The blotting out of sin, where does it begin? In the house of God. How do we receive the blotting out of sin? Can somebody give me the answer? What do we have to do? Where shall we be? Where shall we find ourselves if ever we want to receive the blotting out of sins? Can anybody give me a comment? Short, please. Because we have 10 minutes left. An answer, not a question. I am both, isn't it? The Holy of Holies, where the blotting out of heavens and to be there in prayer and to ask and to pray for searching the heart and purging the heart and confess your sins as soon as the Holy Spirit starts to convict convict you. That's my as far as I know. Because of the day of atonement, people had to flick their souls and our priest would make a decision for them and they would confess their sins over the goat and so the sins were transferred and in the holy bodies they were dealt with by the blood foreshadowing what Christ would do for us. But I also have a question about the letter ring. Where does it say in the Bible that the sealing comes before the letter ring? Because I, I hear a lot of opinions, but I, I want to learn, I want to know in the scripture where I can find things. So please, give me the Bible. Brother Molili, or Brother Wesley, it's also possible. I didn't hear you yet. I saw you always smiling there at the back and say yes. Sometimes no, but then, now we want to hear you. I can't quote from the Bible. I would, I would lie if I would quote from the Bible for that. She's asking uh, where we find that uh, the sealing uh, shall precede the receiving of the latter rain or the latter rain shall fall after people have been sealed. She says, where do we find that in the Bible? And that's why I'm saying I, I can't see it in the Bible. When you read the spirit of prophecy, you can find it. Sure. I thought I can hear the answer here. Sorry? <laughs> I thought I can hear the answer over that's the here. Answer. Yeah, but you, you understand. Okay. You cannot find it in the Bible. You can find the terms. I think you should be able to find it in the Bible, shouldn't you? you? Can find it in no, not should, always. But it's biblical. Sorry? The angel will warn your wings to steal. And even if you continue going further, further in Revelation, Revelation is saying how we are going um, out to do the work and that the devil is against us, fighting us. So you can you can will not find it like in one sentence, but if you study from Revelation 7 and go to 14, you will see the, the experience of it. You will not find the word. No, I didn't mean a certain scripture, but I meant perhaps typology or you know. Uh, as far as I know now, I'm new, you know. I'm not an expert, but uh, that's why I seek to have a firm foundation. Yeah. Look. If we talk about the Roman Catholic, then you can also not find it in the Bible. But because of what we know and what we have studied, it cannot be otherwise than the Roman Catholic Church. 
for instance. The Bible talks about sealing, feeling of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it talks about it. The Bible talks about the latter rain, the former rain. It talks about it. When we look at the prophecies, then, then, then the Bible talks about a certain time, which I believe very soon, that a power beginning in America, coming to the whole world, will cause us to worship the beast and accept the mark of the beast. We, could, we call it the time of the Sunday law. You cannot find it in the Bible, but it's there. But you can find it in the spirit of prophecy, of which we believe that it is inspired by God. Not the Bible. It's the little light, which leads us to the, to the great light, the Bible. Yes, but it helps you to see it in the Bible. Sorry? It does help you to see it in the Bible because you find the mark of the beast and you can find back tracing that if the mark of God, sorry, is the Sabbath. So you know you can find it back in first, at first, but with the help of the spirit of prophecy, you do, you, you are able to find it. So I thought it must be, it must be possible to find this too, mm -hmm. you know? Find it, what? To find to find the the scriptural, uh, yeah, how do you say? I think that topology Proof. about no topology. I think about the, the letter rain and the ceiling. Perhaps from the story of Ezekiel, where the ceiling uh, takes place, and you know, I have to study a lot, to, to, and I will. But I thought I asked because I think you I should be that. you you should be able to give more light on this than I. No? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, not all of you, but I'm not yes. accusing, but I'm, I'm trying yeah. to. You ask me, you ask me. This is the challenge among my brothers and sisters, because this is our homework this week. And next week, you all look at us in the eyes and say, I want my answer. That is wrong. I can say that. This is the test now. Because really? we, this is our test. We have to find what she wants. Yes, but it is not no, no, no. find search for something which is not there. And all your, my brother, my brother, that is why she says, if it's in the Bible, can you get it for me? And then you find it in where? In the spirit of prophecy. But the spirit of prophecy is going to do what? Is going in the Bible commentary. That, it that's has true, to be that's there. true. But yes, certain, yes. certain, certain yes. terminology yes, yes. you cannot find in the Bible. But you can find it in the spirit of prophecy. That's what I mean. You find it in the spirit of prophecy, but the spirit of prophecy is going to take you to the Bible commentary. Yeah, I, I understand. Yes, okay, but yes. I would like to cite myself uh, what Sister uh, Denaida said. Yeah. You know, the, the chapters which she mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can conclude that. Yeah. But, See, but you have to study it. Yeah. Uh, the spirit of prophecy says something about no, the two, the relationship. That's why I was very careful. You are right to say in the spirit of prophecy we can find an answer. When you read, um, uh, I think it's one of the, the, the letters, yes, just indicating, oh, Manu, Maranatha, Maranatha, page 1, page 1, uh, page 212, Maranatha, page 212, chapter, uh, paragraph 1, uh, paragraph 2. Before the work is closed up, and the sealing of God's people is finished, we shall receive the outpouring of the Spirit of God. So the, the outpouring comes before the sealing, according to the Spirit of Prophecy. Because we are sealed, we are sealed by the, the, the mark of, because it's the Spirit that settles us into the truth. He leads us in, into the into the truth. The sealing itself, sealing is the settling of the saints into the truth, and only the Spirit can make us completely settle into the truth. Your question. Yes, there is. You cannot really find the exact words which you ask. But the Bible can just state 
you know, if you look at, you wanna know about more what sealing is, then there are some Bible verses. No, I, didn't, I not, didn't ask that. I, I didn't ask for specific text because then I wouldn't know. Okay. I asked what for was your, again, what was your question? It's what Dinaida, in fact, uh, gave answer to this. It's to recognize the lines that the Bible is, that are used in the Bible so you can recognize it's biblical what is spoken of. That's all I ask. I don't ask specific terminology to find back into yeah, the because, Bible. Uh, I ask for the... No, I don't know, I don't your, your question, um, how to give words to it. <laughs> Sorry. What was your question exactly? When? I asked, where do you find in the Bible that, yes. uh, but not in specific terminology again, yeah. but where do you find in the Bible that um, the letter, yeah, the letter rain comes after the ceiling. How can you trace it back in the Bible? Like you find typology about, for instance, the Exodus is also a typology of the end time, and it's also a typology of the personal salvation experience. Okay, it's never men okay. uh, mentioned so like that the in the Bible, is but it when, is there. When? No, where? Where? where in the Bible we can find that the ceiling comes after the latter rain, right? Yes. Is that it? After the latter rain. No, the latter rain. Uh, no. The latter rain. <laughs> yeah. The latter rain comes be sure. after the ceiling. Yes, that um, because I find here some, but you have to because it's not really exactly you know um, according to what you ask. But just it's example here in um, Ephesians. Can you read it? Ephesians what? Ephesians one, thirteen, thirteen and thirteen. Thirteen and fourteen. Okay. Uh, in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is given as a pledge of our inheritance, with, um, with, an, with a view of the redemption of God's own possessions to the praises of his glory. So this is not King James Version, but read it in King James Version. So it talks also about the ceiling, but it does not say, you know, that uh, um, it will just, it will happen after the, the latter rain. No, other no the ceiling will uh, come after the latter rain. No, the latter rain, that's what I mean. The latter rain comes after the ceiling. I want to be as you know as clear as possible about that, not to mix it up. And when I start talking to people, you know, yeah. that's what so I. It's, this is one of them. Let's be sure. Sorry. May I say a word? May I say a word? Yeah. Um, because I uh, I uh, would like to react on uh, on what Brother Bolilica said about uh, that uh, text from the uh, Spirit of Prophecy. It says here. Before the work is closed up and the sealing of God's people is finished, we shall receive the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Now, the question is, is, is we, who, who are we? Because remember that, that the, the, the judgment will begin at the, at the house of God, isn't it? The house of God first and then the rest. So that means that when the Sunday law comes, we will be brought to make a decision for God or against God, for receiving the mark of God, the Sabbath, time of Sabbath, or the mark of the beast. The people in God's house, their sins will be blotted out that time. All those faithful Seventh-day Adventists who have been uh, constantly be connected with Christ in the most holy place, their sins will be blotted out. After the blotted out of the sins, we, at this, who are faithful, will be sealed. They will receive the letter A to bring out the loud cry. Of course, the letter A is still there, and a lot of people need to be still, uh, sealed still, because 
those who are outside in the other churches where God has his children as well. So the loud cry will be, be, be uh, proclaimed, which will say, come out of her, my people. So in that sense, the letter rain will come after the sealing because there are a lot of, a lot of people who are not being sealed yet. Sorry, let me go to that. You said the, the letter rain will come after the sealing. Sorry? The letter rain will come after the sealing. No. 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 Okay. I'm saying, look. The sealing. Again, the Sunday law, yeah. Yeah. decision making, learning out of sins, sealing of God's people, faithful people. Mm -hmm. Receiving power, the letter rain, to bring out, proclaim the loud cry, come out of her, my people. All those who are faithful children sorry, in our sorry, church. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you there. You said sealing. I'm talking about sealing. Yes. Yeah, because if you say sealing, then, then we need to receive also sealing up after the letter rain. Or which sealing are you talking about? Is it two sealing? Or uh, we're going to see two times? Or... No, we, because the sealing doesn't happen instantly, cooperatively, co co cooperatively, it happens individually. So you may be sealed, but another one not yet. Yeah. Well, you see, the sealing, the, the last sealing, after the sealing, then we we'll have no sin again. No, it's not true. Yeah, so but maybe if, because if everyone's sealed, yeah, the sealing, there will be no even a intercession again. No, but no. So then it means maybe the sealing, then there will be no one maybe uh, maybe to receive repentance. So we need to understand that because the the letter end will be give, given to proclaim the loud cry of which will bring people to God. Then those who they will bring to God, then the sin will come now after they have received the message and everyone will be sealed. And after sealing, then the provision will grow. No one, there will be no repentance anymore. That's what I'm saying. So there will be no repentance anymore. So the sealing comes after what? Lettering. Because we receive the lettering to proclaim the message. No. 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 Yes, he is talking about the house of God when it starts. Because it starts by us. Yeah. It but I'm talking about the lettering because the lettering is the apparel of the Holy Spirit. The lettering will fall in the doctrine that you go to the world and tell the world. Exactly. So after them, they will be sealed. Sealed first. Yes. So even the best will be for the house of God first. Yes. So that is what he is saying. And then you will go out to the world and then they will be sealed. So everybody, um, like they, will not be sealed at the same time that the house of God will be sealed. Okay, that one also is true. But after the, after then, there will be total sealing. Then there will be no one, no, there will be no repent and probation will close. And if you read the uh, last day events, it's very much clear. Last day events, when you read, read the, the, let me see, because I was reading it here. If you want to be sure, chapter 13, the letter ran. If you read a uh, letter ran and also the. Where? Uh, last day events. Right? Chapter 13, and also you read chapter 14, the love cry, and also again the sealing. That's how Sister White is progressive. Then after the love cry, then you receive the sealing of the God people and the mark of the beast. Read last day event. Sister White made it clear. It's very much explained in last day event. Then after that, probation will close. Then the seven last place. May I uh, read? May I read from the scare of the world? Sister Dorothy, may I read something which may, may clear up what we are discussing? The heading is here, the letter rain falls on the sealed people. This is uh, taken from early writings, chapter 71, 1 to 2. It says, I, I also saw that many do not realize what they must be in order to live in the sight of the Lord without a high priest in the sanctuary through the time of trouble. Those who receive the seal of the living God and are protected in the time of trouble must reflect the image of Jesus fully. I saw that many were neglecting the preparation so needful and were looking to the time of refreshing and the letter rain to fit them to stand in the day of the Lord 
and to live in his sight. Oh, how many I saw in the time of trouble without a shelter. They have neglected the needed full preparation. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they could not receive the refreshing. So she's referring to the early rain. The people did not comply to it, and therefore they could not receive the refreshing. That all must have to fit them to live in the sight of the holy God. Now the refreshing is the blotting out of sins. Mm -hmm. Those who refuse to be hooded by the prophets and fail to purify their souls in obeying the whole truth, and who are willing to believe that their condition is far better than in reality is, will come up to the time of the falling of the plagues, and then see that they needed to be hooded and scored for the building. But there will be no time then to do it, and no mediator to plead their cause before the Father. Before this time, the awfully solemn declaration has gone forth. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. I saw that none could share the refreshing, or blocking out of sin, unless they obtain the victory over every resentment, over pride, selfishness, love of the world, and over every wrong word and action. We should therefore be drawing nearer and nearer to the Lord, and be earnestly seeking the preparation necessary to enable us to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Everyone must now search the Bible for himself upon his knees before God with humble, teachable heart of a child, if he would know what the Lord requires of him. However high and minister may have stood in the favor of God, if he neglects to follow out the light given him of God, he refuses to be taught as a child. He will go into darkness and satanic delusions and will lead others in the same way. Not one of us will ever receive the seal of God while our characters have one spot or stain upon them. It is left with us to remedy the defects in our characters, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement. Then, after cleansing, being sealed, the letter ring will follow. This is the spirit of As the early rain fell upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. So the sequence is needful preparation, that's what we discussed in the beginning. Victory over every besetting sin. Then the seal. And then the letter rain, the refreshing. And after that, you have almost a close of probation. Which chapter was it? Chapter so, sorry? Chapter, chapter one? Sorry? What was the source? The early writings? Chapter, uh, early writings, uh, chapter 71. 71. 71. Uh, uh, Alinea 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. 1 and 2. So, I cannot make it. It says here also, all who receive the seal must be without spot before God. So that happens during the time of the early reign. Not the letter rain. The letter rain is there to give you power to, to, to proclaim the love of crime. Is that so? The sequence is early rain, sealing, letter rain, loud cry, and then the close of probation. That's, that's, that's the sequence. I cannot make it otherwise. It, the spirit of prophecy says it very clear. Anyway, uh, we, know, we, we, we do not pretend to know everything, and I advise everybody to, to study. Yes. Once again, this book is not free. But you can download it for free. It's not expensive. This book is only 12 euros and 95 cents. So a very good book. It, 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 then you do not have to search for all the text. It's already here. And you can, of course, you, don't, you should not believe it right away. You should check it out if it's true, like the Bereans. OK? So study it. And the next time we come together again, and, and if you want to take part in this discussion, you must study before you, for yourself. It's, it's just like that. I do not pretend to know the whole thing. Sister, uh, Sister Selina. I just have one question. Yes. Um, maybe there is a, the, the different questions. It's also a question that I have. Um, it's about the seal. 
Sure. We are saying we're going to be sealed, mm -hmm. and then the latter rain comes after. We know the latter rain is the Holy Spirit, it's, but it's the one that gives us power to proclaim the gospel of the third angel for before for, to prepare the world for the second coming of Jesus. Yes. But before that, we're saying we're going to be sealed. The Bible tells us we're going to be sealed by the Holy Spirit. We read, we just read that in Ephesians. So that sealing is also the Holy Spirit. Maybe there is a different task of this Holy Spirit. Maybe that can be a little bit shorter explanation briefly. Brother what Mullen. is the seal? We're talking about Brother this. Mullen, will you please give an answer then the difference between the sealing of the Holy Spirit and the sealing at the end time? Even, even those at the Pentecost, they were sealed, if you will, and this is what we read. <coughs> if you look at the order of the sealing itself, is that Jesus Christ is very clear. Receive the, letter, receive the Spirit, then you will have power. You cannot settle into the truth without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who actually seals us with the, the seal of the truth. And that's why in Mar Maranatha it's very straightforward. The outpouring of the Spirit will come. Because remember, we have already the early rain. Then we need the latter rain, which matures the fruit, as our sister says. How does the, ma ma the fruit mature in this Adventist before it receives? The latter rain that matures the fruit. That's the question. Because for me to mature into a, a fully fledged Seventh day Adventist, or, or be, in this case, will, will be called actually the remnant, if you will, at that point, the new remnant, when the ceiling separates us. We know that, although we don't want to, to, to believe that, in the end there will be a separation, unfortunately, there will be a separation. But the latter rain will actually come before the fruit mature. The fruit cannot mature before the latter rain. It's, it's, it's a common principle of nature. And, and the Spirit of Prophecy says the same. It says the outpouring who come before the ceiling. Can I say it? No, no. The, you said after. The, the outpouring will come before the ceiling, right? not after the ceiling. Uh, okay, we really have to study this. Yeah, yeah. Can I say something on that on our question? I believe we are talking of ceiling. We have two types of ceiling. Yeah, Sorry? that's what I want to Yeah, that's the question. Yeah, two types of ceiling. Let me read, open with me in uh, Ephesians. Open with me to Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, verse 30, and the Bible reads, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. I'm going to spend, also read with me to uh, 2 Corinthians 1, verse 22. 2 Corinthians 1, verse 22. He says, who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our heart as a guarantee. So the day we receive Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit, that's the first sealing. You have the spirit who will be leading, the Holy Spirit will be leading you. But that is not the final sealing. Of which the final sealing comes when we have already received and after the Lord cry, then that sealing, then there will be no sin again. You will no longer go back to sin after you have must sealed the last time. But this first sealing, you can see fall back to sin and repent again. So that's the difference. The first sealing, you can see going to sin and also repent. But the last sealing, there will be no sin again. That's the final probation closes. Thank you very much, brother. All right, I think we should stop now. We will never stop studying this <laughs> subject. So let's not uh, pretend that we know everything now. Let's study. That's my advice. Let's study each individual for himself yeah, together yeah, with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but I, I, I really have to wonder what is the conclusion because we are going now, oh, everybody goes. Stop. Well, what the conclusion the is side? that there are some of us who believe that the <coughs> letter rain is uh, before the ceiling, the outpouring of the letter rain, before the ceiling. Uh, according to what I have understood, 
I do not pretend to know everything, but what I understood is that the, the letter rain, the outpouring of it, is after the ceiling, especially when it starts with the hundred of them. Okay, Sister Akhtar is really the last one, and then we start. Brother, Brother, brother Hans. Oh, Brother Hans, just a second. Oh, Brother Hans. All right. Just a second, you know. When Christ was still with his disciples, after he had resurrected, he blew on them, he said, receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Then he went to uh, heaven, and then ten days later we go to the day of Pentecost. And, uh, you know, when, when you talk about typology, maybe that's the, the, uh, just when we can see it, then it, it may, you know, they already received also the Holy Spirit, but then the outpouring, the power came at the day of Pentecost when they spoke in different tongues and at that moment they got out from Jerusalem and they started preaching the word to, like Paul also did, to the rest of the world. So I think just in sealing, uh, it was sealed and it was sealed, you know, uh, maybe there's indeed more to just being sealed and that's it. We may stop it. Yeah. Okay, what is according to your understanding the principle behind this? Is the same principle for the letter, or early rain the same as for the letter? Rain? No, because it's anyone is like. No, no, get lost. I, I know that we um, uh, the, the generally it is it's uh, taught that uh, when uh, at the day of Pentecost they receive what we call the early rain. Um, um, that may have been for that very moment in time, but if we see typology also um, when. The, Israelites went out of Egypt and the Passover, etc. Passover is still celebrated today in our hearts. And it is still going to be when the angel of destruction will come. You will you know what, what is it? We are not putting oil on the doorpost, but you will see when we have received Jesus Christ our Savior and He will pass over us. I mean, we're still celebrating it. So when it comes to um, going through certain procedures that Christ has shown us, starting from the Old Testament, going through the New Testament still, there are things to learn. So I believe when Christ blew on the disciples, they did not receive the power yet, but they were sealed by him as his apostles. After that, the day of Pentecost, they received, I believe, the power from God and the Holy Spirit. Because when Christ was them, he said, I have to go first, and then the Holy Spirit will come. But it is Christ in His righteousness by whom we are saved. Thank you very much. Sister Akhtar, really the last one, because then we are going to close. Great. Okay. Personally, I found it all a very good lesson. And um, I was truly blessed by everybody's comments. I find this a little bit that we this. Just like how we have also a topic or subject that uh, our goal for per month, I think we should do this also in the afternoon study because we see the need and a lot of questions are coming but how many question marks are going home and we are studying individually but we're still not getting the answers and I, to me when we study together we can gather information or ideas from someone else and maybe something that was maybe difficult for us to understand we can be enlightened so I would encourage the church, the leaders to not just keep it by one afternoon study but it should be continually on the same subject so that until when the church understands fully what is actually taking place because a lot of people i think sister Tisha, she also has some question i do have question mark but then you go home and you wonder okay did i fully understand what they were saying and now we're only getting maybe just a little portion but when will it continue that is the only problem I think I have that we don't get it often. Even though you have to study at home, you don't go to cover the knowledge that you have to help someone else because you see there are a lot of differences in what we're supposed to actually have already as a pillar. We're supposed to be at one level, but still we see that we are wavering. Should it be this way? Should it be that way? So we need help in that area. Amen. So, the advice is, fill your batteries at home and let the shine, the light shine in the church. And if we do that, let me learn the most. In, in fact, I learned the most from, from the body of the Just uh, each other better. So, I hope you at least got something out of it.
And uh, let's ask the Lord for help. Amen. May I 